Hello, dear friends. We've come to a factory that makes Zhang Cha or Tibetan tea. This is a brick of Hei Cha that some of you know about. Because of its more popular variant, Hunan dark tea, I must say that this type of tea is produced not only in Hunan, but also in Sichuan, Guangxi, and Luang provinces. Moreover, there are also small production facilities in other regions. However, Hunan dark tea is the most popular. Today, we tried this brick tea with Xinhua, or golden mold. We really like this product. What's interesting is that the same tea was delivered to Tibet from here, and that's why it's called Tibetan tea. Sichuan province is located next to Tibet. This tea is also called border tea. The production technology of this tea was brought back, and now they make really good hei cha. By the way, the wall behind me is made entirely of hei cha bricks. This is a brick tea carrying device. It was used for carrying tea on narrow Tibetan paths. Many of you might have seen a famous photograph where a tea porter, loaded with giant tea bricks, is going up a mountain trail. This is the authentic carriage that was used in the past. It comes with a support pole. It can be used as a walking stick when climbing, and also as a support for the load, allowing you to have a rest. A handy tool, I should say. Tea bricks were really heavy, so the porter's job was difficult. The carriage itself is well designed. It has the proper weight distribution. Mm. This is a map of the Chama Gudao, the ancient tea horse road, also called the Southern Silk Road. This map is printed by many factories, including Pua and Hei Cha production facilities. All the routes of the Chama Gadao are depicted here. The road network is really diverse and has many entryways. Hei Cha, or dark tea, has been produced in this region for more than 400 years. In China, it's usually called border tea, and it's usually pressed into bricks. Our tea raw material for Hei Cha stands out from others. Speaking of the technology, it probably won't be clear if I mention all the production aspects. I think that's because they don't want to reveal their production secrets. That's so isn't it? Our red tea, Hong Mao Feng red tea, is organic and produced in a salubrious environment. The tea liquor is clear and bright, transparent, with a yellow tint and with some tea fur in it. The production of this tea requires a lot of skill and technical knowledge. In order to produce this red tea, you need to be an expert. The fermentation takes a long time, from months to years, and the humidity and oxygen have to be controlled. Do you like the taste? Yes, I do. It really differs from other red teas. That's correct. This is the advantage of our technology. <laughs> I'd like to ask, does the production technology of this tea originate in this factory? Or is the process more traditional from ancient times? This tea was picked. This tea was picked on Xingming, the festival of clear light in the beginning of April. It's not necessary to pick the earlier spring buds to make this tea. It can be made with later buds as well. Leaves are also part of this tea. However, you can feel that the taste of this tea is rich and full of complex notes. Does this red tea have a production history? Or do you use more modern techniques in the process? Our red tea production was kick-started long after Hei Cha production in the Qing Dynasty. 
The technology of red tea production started in Fujian province. There are many legends about the origins of red tea. One of the legends says that one time someone was producing green tea, but were distracted by something, and the tea began to ferment. When they noticed it, they thought that the tea was spoiled, but they brewed it anyway, and in the result, they got a tasty brew with a beautiful color. Fujian red tea, which first originated in the Qing dynasty, became very popular in Europe about 300 years ago. In Sichuan, red tea emerged later, but our technology is as good as Fujian. Speaking of our tea company, Ya An is the first company that began to produce red tea, because almost everyone here makes green tea and didn't learn how to make red tea properly. This is why our local technologists are studying in other provinces, and only then they come here and develop tea production. Can you tell us a bit about the history of Heichar? Where it comes from and how it's made? Here in Sichuan, we call it Zhangcha, Tibetan tea. You can say that Zhangcha is the father of Heichar that emerged during the Tang dynasty. During the Tang dynasty, when Princess Wen Chung traveled to see her husband in Tibet, she brought some tea with her. After that, Tibetans developed a habit of drinking tea, and they liked it. Do you know why Ya'an has its name? Because in Tibetan, Ya'an means yak's tail. Since the Tang dynasty, the government decided that this tea must be produced here for Tibet, because we're close to it. Inland Chinese territories are not connected with Tibet because of the lack of roads. Tea was pressed into bricks and carried to Tibet on the Charmagada using carriages like those ones over there, see? They were still used until recently. Tea bricks that were made in the past were big and long in order to carry them on your back. We make smaller bricks these days. Peicha was usually carried on foot to Tibet because you can only cross the mountain ranges from Sichuan to Tibet on foot. In the beginning, they carried rough green tea of the lowest quality, Mao Cha. After some time under weather conditions, tea began to ferment naturally. Unlike Sheng Pua, which is deliberately fermented, Hei Cha is the result of natural organic fermentation unlike poor fermentation. Hei Cha became very popular in Tibet and it preserves really well. This is the reason why Hei Cha production is gradually developed here in Ya'an. The production of Yunnan and Shangxi Hei Cha came from here. As Tibetans say, if you don't drink tea for a day, you'll feel discomfort. If you don't drink tea for three days, you'll feel weak and apathetic. They can't live without tea, because lack of tea will affect their health. Their diet consists mostly of meat and animal fats. They eat very little vegetables and fresh fruit, so their diet is missing vitamins and minerals. For Tibetans, tea is essential for good health, because it contains the nutrients that they're missing and also because it helps to digest meat and animal fat. There's been a vigorous trade since the Tang and Song dynasties. Tibetan horses were exchanged for tea. One horse was worth 20 to 50 kilograms of tea. Tibetan horses are strong and vigorous, which makes them especially valuable during wars and conflicts. They're very important for China to fight invading nomads in the northern provinces. In Gansu, there was a trading station between the Chinese and Tibetans, where Tibetans brought their goods and horses to exchange for tea. Each porter carried from 60 to 90 kilograms of tea, which was more than his own body weight. We know from history that the Chinese government used tea and the tea trade as an instrument of control of the bordering territories and Tibet itself. The tea is vital for Tibetans, so active tea trade prevents wars and mitigates conflicts.
The production of Tibetan hay cha was under government control from the Tang Dynasty to 2001. If any private enterprises emerged during that time, they had to get a special permit from the government to do business. The government issued permits for the quantity of tea that can be produced and sold for each production factory. In 2001, the government eliminated control over this tea. And now it's possible to open new factories and do business as you want. So the production of this tea is booming. In the past, we could only sell tea to Tibet. This is why the Chinese didn't know about this tea. Now the situation is changing. Are the tea leaves picked at the same time as Hunan? In June or earlier? Is the leaf long and when do you pick the tea? Now we're using not only the cheapest tea material with branches and old leaves. So we pick tea all year round. This particular tea is made of young leaves. It has a bud with one to two leaves material on it. It's picked during autumn or winter. However, we try to pick better material. Avoiding really old sprigs because they're useless. Some amount of sprigs is actually good for the fermentation process. Moreover, sprigs contain nutrients and cellulose. It's good for gastric motility. There's a lot of cellulose in vegetables. It works the same way. Now, it's not very important when you pick sangcha. It is important to pick the proper tea material. If the leaf is young, it's made of spring or summer tea material. If it's old, it's autumn or winter. It's not like green tea, that can only be picked in winter or summer. Thank you very much.